and iron. James had to wait at Edward station till Edward and his train came into the station. This made him ever cross. He saw him being ever late. Late again, he shouted. Edward heard and laughed, and James fumed away. Edward is impossible, he grumbled to the others. He clicks a bait. Like a lot of old iron. It is a slur. He makes us wait. Thomas and Percy indignant. Old iron? They snorted. Slur? Uh, Edward could pitch in a race any day. Rightly, said James Huffler. I should like to see him do it. One year a fine day, James's driver did not feel well, but it came to work. Oh, marriage, he said. When they reached the top of the hill of Gordon's, he was rarely not looking ever good. He was looking ever bad. He couldn't stand properly. The fireman drove the train to the next station. He spoke to the signalman, put the trucks in the siding, and uncoupled James ready for shunting. He took him over to the station and asked them to look after him and find relief. Suddenly something ever strange happened. The signalman shouted. The fireman turned round and saw his engine, James, puffing away. He ran hard but couldn't catch up, James. 
and soon came back to the signal box. The signalman was bitter. All traffic halted, announced at last, up and down main lines, a class for 30 males, and the inspector's coming. The fireman mocked his face. What hit? What happened? He asked. Two boys on the footplate. They tumbled off and ran. And James started. They shouted at them and they ran like rabbits. Just let me catch them, said the fireman criminal. I'll teach them to meddle with me engine. Both men jumped as the telephone rang. After the telephone rang, the signalman answered it. Yes, he answered. Is her right? I'll tell you. Inspector's coming at once in Edward. He wants a shunter's pearl and a coil of fire rope. What for? wondered the fireman. Search me, but you better get them quickly. The fireman was ready and waiting when Edward came. Arrived. Inspector saw the pearl and a coil of fire rope. Good man, jump in, he said. Who oh, catch him? Who oh, catch him? But cross him out to the bed and shoot. James is laughing. She left the yard. What a lark, what a lark, he chuckled to himself. Presently, he missed his driver's hand on the regulator. But then he ran on the house, after he noticed that his regulator was not touched. There was no one in his care. What shall I do? He wailed. The can't stop! Ow! Ow! We're coming! We're coming! Puffed Edward. He was panting up the hill with every ounce of fit, ounce of steam in the air. But a great effort had caught up with James. Steady, Edward. The spectre stood on it and stopped, building a noose of earth in the coat of the shunter's pearl. He was trying to slip it over James's buffer. The engine swine and large. Tried again and again. More than once and now they fell off. They just saved themselves. At last! Got him! He shouted. Hoping his tight. He came back to the train safely. Gently breaking. So it was not to slip the middle. James's driver checked the engine's spear. James's fire and screamed at the bottom to the tree. waiting and thanking the man warmly. A fine piece of work, he said. James, you can rest and then take your train. I'm proud of you, Edward. You show go to the works and have your worn parts mended. If my worn parts mended, oh thank you, sir, said Edward Hippler and feeling even more over proud. It would be lovely not to clank. So now he was sent to the works in two days 